Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have a couple of questions for Secretary True and a question for Secretary LaHood. Um, the state of Vermont has, uh, I believe, led the country in terms of energy efficiency. We are actually consuming less electricity now than we were a couple of years ago. And it's not like there was, you know, the recession has hit us, but not any worse than it has hit other states. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, I understand that you're announcing today a very significant uh, funding for the quote-unquote smart grid, and Vermont is going to do well by that. My understanding is that in previous studies, uh, a home can reduce its electricity consumption by 15 or 20 percent with one of these smart grids. Can you take a moment uh, to explain to the people what you hope to accomplish uh, with this smart grid program? Well, the first thing that will happen with uh, a smart grid, especially with homeowners, is uh, what you want to do is you want first to let the homeowners know sort of in real time how they're using electricity. And in times, as we transition to real cost, real time pricing of electricity, for example, um, it's not true in Vermont, but let's say in a place where there's a lot of air conditioning and you're using uh, energy, it costs a lot of money to provide power during those peak times. Right. We, we have um, uh, about 5 percent if you look at the power, we have a lot of um, gas peakers that are essentially idle, except for maybe the last 5 percent of the time. The, the bottom line here, it, it will enable consumers of electricity to use that, that electricity much more cost effectively. Do you have any estimates as to what kind of uh, uh, savings we, we can see in that in terms of percentage of reduction of electricity in the average home? Not off the top of my head, but, but, uh, but I know globally across the United States, if we just peak load shift, uh, that last 5 percent, which we can do without really any disruption or change of lifestyle. Uh, globally, in the United States, we're talking about over $100 billion per year. All right. The other thing is, Mr. Secretary, I've got a chart here uh, which deals uh, with the cost to build new power plants in 2009. And what it suggests is that the least expensive way forward is through wind, followed by biomass, followed by solar th thin film, followed by geothermal, followed by solar thermal. Then we have coal gasification, and that number does not include coal sequestration, which makes it a lot more expensive. And then we got nuclear. In other words, what this chart tells you, if you're serious about building more capacity in the United States, the most cost-effective way to go forward is through the new sustainable energies. What does that chart tell you in terms of how this country has got to invest into the future? Well, unfortunately, my eyes i am getting old, <laughs> and I can't read the axes, so I can't, I can't say about the numbers. Uh, but certainly, one of the things is that we are trying to, first, the first thing you do is you work very hard on energy conservation, so you don't build any new anything, right. uh, and you just save. And that, that if done correctly, that's a, a money maker. Right. You know, the investments in energy efficiency, the consumer actually keeps that money. And so that, that's the best thing you can but do. My only point here is that the most expensive new electricity generation is nuclear and coal. And yet I sit around this, this committee and all I hear is nuclear and coal. It seems to me that if we're smart and we want to save taxpayers money and we want to protect the environment and we want to create jobs, maybe we should start looking at wind, biomass, solar and geothermal. 